What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back, and it's time to head over to 3-2 Upper Latria. Now, after that last fight, a uh, couple things that we can now do. Most importantly, we have now rescued Yuria. Now, Yuria is all the way back here in the corner. Uh, you're going to have to talk to her twice, but she'll ask you if you're okay with learning witchcraft. And at that point, you can start learning some crazy strong spells, one of which is Firestorm, a massive AoE that will basically instagib most bosses. Uh, it is very, very powerful. If you saw the Demon Souls Let's Play I did uh, on the original that we did last year, Firestorm is what I used to basically one-shot most bosses. So, super, super strong spell. Um, alternatively, if you still have that particular soul, we can pick up Wrath of God from a merchant we'll get a little bit later. Uh, but namely, the biggest thing I want to point out is we can get Curse Weapon from her. Now, Curse Weapon comes from the Penetrator Soul. Alternatively, you could go over to Sage Freak and get Light Weapon, which is a uh, basically a magic scaling based enchant. But what's so good about Cursed Weapon is Cursed Weapon will give us a 50% attack rating boost on our weapon. It's just a flat out 50%. So with something like this, which is at 245, you know, let's just say it's 250, just to round up, we get an extra 125 from Cursed Weapon. So needless to say, very, very potent for melee oriented builds. Uh, but so make sure you pick up that just from the souls uh, from going through that level and killing penetrator you should have close to enough to get your intelligence to 18 so this is where we're at now our intelligence is going to stay at 18 our faith is staying at 16 our dex is staying at 16 those three stats are completely done uh, magic's done luck doesn't get touched strength is fine at 30 so from here on out we're basically going to get vitality up to 30 and then just focus on pumping up endurance so that we can start wearing some thicker armor uh, but let's head on over Upper Latria. This area isn't too bad, actually. Uh, compared to the first part of Latria, uh, I find the, the upper version actually be a lot easier. So, just head on in. Now, right at the start here, there is a renowned hero soul right down there. Just ignore that for now. Uh, eventually, we're going to pop out on top and drop down, so we'll just grab it then. Just save ourselves some time. And there's going to be a couple gargoyles here. Now, they take a little bit of time to catch up, so just ignore the first one for now. Go on up here, and one will land, and we'll kill that one instead. And then the other gargoyle should catch up to us. There we go. See, now he's coming. Oh, nope, he's flying away. Well, oh well. We don't need to kill him, necessarily. Um, so at this split... Ignore going to the right. We're actually going to drop down there for a little bit of treasure in a little bit. So for now, instead, just head on up. Now, this next part is particularly tricky, in my opinion. I uh, had... It, uh, the, all, in all the times I've done this, I've been able to get it consistently only a couple times. But basically, you can see a ledge and there's loot. So what I would suggest doing is right kind of here where you can see... I mean, you can obviously see the message... I mean, you can see how it's kind of black and squiggly. Instead, just walk straight. Don't roll, don't do anything else, just walk. And that should get you down. Pick up the rune shield and sword. These are both actually pretty cool. Um, going over this way. Nothing over here. Just a message, though. Kind of a, a cool, spooky location that you can get some good screenshots with. Uh, but we're going to drop down. And this is actually... Uh, the opposite side so when we came up and I said you know don't go right go left this is what we would have come to if we had gone to the right which is why I wanted to hold off because it just made more sense to to get it so we'll get the moonlight stone shard we'll roll through these and grab this uh, there's more stuff down that way but we need to actually go down there later so just ignore that for now we'll grab this guy as well while we're here and back up top we go That's definitely one of those areas that, after learning, it's a lot smoother. Alright. Gotta get some water there. Otherwise, I would have kept sprinting. Alright. <clears throat> and now that we are all the way up top... Uh, going that way actually leads to the boss, but you can't right now. You can see there's a big thing in the way, so just ignore that. Instead, go over this way. Uh, so there's going to be two gargoyles that we have to fight. 
Gonna take care of one. We got another one up ahead. It was not very accurate. Right over here, we can get the Flamberge. Which I really, I really, really, really want to do a build around this thing. Because it has a built-in bleed damage and a pretty killer moveset. So I feel like doing that and maybe putting, uh, put like poison on it. Like poison bleed Flamberge might be kind of cool. Right, and then up ahead we got two more gargoyles we gotta kill. You can already see one flying up in the air. It'll drop down, and this one will take a minute to catch up, so just wait for this guy. Spiral Rapier. A rare loot. I go ahead and pop this open. And then we're going to go around out onto this ledge. Just break those so they're not in the way. And just be careful with your controller here, you know. Up the age spice. Okay, so now we're going to go up the stairs. And there should be one gargoyle that we encounter. Uh, fighting the gargoyles on the stairs is kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest. So. I would suggest just walking past him unless he, like, comes right in front of you. Um, and we'll take care of them in a little bit, so. Right here is the elevator. Just wait for the elevator. The gargoyle comes, you can kill him. But we're actually going to be crossing the elevator here when it comes down. And get some loot on the other side over there by that sign. Don't cross. I did, I did say he wasn't the brightest. Anyway. Oh, and we just missed the elevator. Oh, man. Well, anyway, we're going to be taking this elevator up. Uh, there's going to be a gargoyle likely waiting for us right at the top of the elevator. But to be honest, the gargoyle AI isn't exactly the brightest, as you've seen so far. Sometimes they'll just kind of derp around in the air. Uh, sometimes they'll, they'll just be sitting there. But if this one is waiting for us, just ignore them. Instead, we're going to proceed up this way. And then we just want to kill all of these guys. After killing them, we're going to get a cutscene here. Uh, basically, we destroyed the, the magic. The chain's going to fall, and that's one of the chains for the heart. Uh, now, up here, I want to point this out. <clears throat> so, remember where we're at? This is the first tower. We can't currently do this, but on pure white world tendency, we're going to come back here. And this is where we're going to get the key to free Rydell, the guy that was uh, trapped in the cell and screaming back in the, the uh, jail area. So keep that in mind, which of course we'll be covering that in the next episode as well. But I still want to point it out for those that are just tuning in to one episode for whatever reason. Uh, now you can take these cages down. Instead, we're going to go over this way and... Hanging out with our good buddy. Now this is Yurt. Um, Yurt has some pretty badass armor. Go ahead and let him out of the cell. Um, he says he's on your side, but Yurt's actually uh, a dirty murderer. Uh, Yurt wants to kill everybody. So we, we're, we don't want to be on Yurt's side. But at the same time, we don't actually want to just beat Yurt up because killing him before he aggros could actually uh, pull down our character tendency. So basically what happens to explain Yurt a little bit better is when you free Yurt, he is going to uh, go to the Nexus and he's going to start murdering people. And then if you don't come and kill him, he just keeps murdering people. Uh, and as it progresses, eventually he wipes out some, some pretty important people. He kills off Yuria, uh, he kills Saint Urbane, the miracle guy, he kills Sage Freak. So instead, by just gravitying his ass off the cliff, not only are we unimpacted from a tendency perspective, but by restarting the game, we're able to come here and pick up the dope armor that he drops. Now, he'll drop that regardless of how you kill him, but by doing the gravity method, it's not going to affect your character tendency, which we want pure white character tendency to get a hold of one of the rings for the all ring achievement. 
Anyway, climb in the elevator, ride it on down. Pick up the arc stone while I was up there? I don't know if I did. I'll look at my inventory. Probably, yeah, because I got three. And I think we started with two. If I didn't pick it up, there's an arc stone up on that platform. <clears throat> Alright, so now that we are down in the swamp, uh, exiting the cage, we're going to go around this way first. And we're going to kill the centipede men. Now, look at where we're at right here. This little area, we're going to call this the rocky area. That is eventually where we're going to come back, but there's some stuff that we want to do here first. So, just follow this path along and ignore this little guy or kill him. doesn't matter. And we'll go ahead and kill these centipede men. Now, this platform is actually important. Uh, while right now it's just that, you know, you're regular run of the normal platform, uh, this is actually where we find the, uh, the demon that we want to kill to get upgrade materials for our Dragon Bone Smasher or whatever uh, weapon needs them that you're using. So just keep that in mind. Remember where this place is at. <clears throat> just take your cage down and take a quick loop. Drop down into the swamp. And now down in the swamp, let's see. Should be Plague Resistance Ring and then some more loot and then a big guy that we can kill. Just gonna run around this. There's the Fragrant Ring. Um, loop left for Plague Resistance Ring, another way for loot. Okay, so we gotta get the other stuff. We'll get that in a bit, though. <clears throat> Instead, we're gonna go over here first. And we have a Prison Horde. Now, I'd suggest staying right by this pillar here. We're gonna be able to snipe this guy from this pillar, but he won't be able to shoot us. I'll try and do some magic. There we go. Just making sure we're safe, but go ahead and take this guy out. And this is just like the one in the prison. I mean, you can run up and melee him, but the way he swings his arms around, I wouldn't recommend it. So we have Mercury Stone Shards. And this is another spot I'm going to point out when we come back for Pure Black Tendency. Uh, right here, we'll be able to find a nice little ring. And if you look up, you can kind of see it up top there. Get a better angle here. There you go. You can kind of see the shiny sitting up there. Uh, that's going to come down on Pure Black Tendency. And it'll let us move through swampy areas... Uh, without our motion being imp uh, impeded, which right now isn't a concern, but later on it will be. So, after grabbing that, go back this way. And these are the other two cages. So if we had come down um, from the initial set of cages, this is where we would have been dropped off. Kill this guy. Guide of Guidance. Uh, stone to the right, souls to the left. It's the stone, and souls should be right over here. Alright. Um, do, 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 do. Hmm. The thing I don't get is... Oh, I I did not see the plague resistance ring, so let me go back to my uh, initial drop spot. <clears throat> this is the yurt thing. I said in the notes I wrote loop left for the plague resistance ring. Where are you pick it up? I may have actually already had the plague resistance ring. No. I wrote that there's a plague resistance ring here. I'm not seeing it, but we already have one and you don't need duplicates of rings. So we're gonna go ahead and just chalk it up as maybe a uh, miss note. Anyway, so head up this way, rocks. Continue up more. Kill all of 
of them, and we'll go up top to grab some loot. Warrior soul. Dark moon grass. And we'll go through here. Uh, so run a little ways. There's going to be a uh, black phantom mind flayer. So just like the Tenecbi men that we fought up till now, except he's glowing and red and he's going to hurt a lot more. And he should be up the stairs that we'll reach in just a second. So just kind of be cautious as you're going up here. We're going to snipe him as opposed to getting close. You can already see the light. Yeah, we can use this. Uh... The great thing about the lava bow is the hit stun. Those are able to just do this and he can't even move. Makes things a hell of a lot safer. Now, in this next spot, finish you off. Uh, we can see another one of those guys, and there's a crystal lizard, but there's an ambush guy right behind here. So what we want to do is try to snipe this crystal lizard from back here. And apparently, I'm gliding between the crystals on this thing. There we go. Crystal lizard's dead. Now we'll kill this one. And now we can just walk around with our shield up. Waiting for Mr. Ambush. I'm going to want to pick that up. Now you'll notice that there's a shiny right here. And here. Actually, can we get this one? Yeah, we can. We can slip between. For some reason, I thought we had to remove the heart to get that one. This. Ooh, a chunk. Very nice. Um, let's see. Snipe lizard. Another centipede waiting to ambush you in some spice. So ahead we have an ambush gargoyle to the right. So he wants to hang out. We'll just make his life easy for him. Oh no, the loot. Um, you're real? Oh, he just barely dodged it. Right, stop flying. Oh yeah, these gargoyles, man. They just, they take forever to land. And there's another one up top. I can go ahead and pop him off too. Also, really easy to see them compared to the original. I love how like vivid they are. All right, let's see ambush gargoyle. Two more ahead. We're gonna go around to the left for a soul item, and then we'll take the elevator up. Um, after the elevator, we're just going to run up and kill the dregs, and then we'll finish off the gargoyles. Yep, just another day waiting in the tower. This thing needs to have a push button to make it come faster. This is just like the other tower, so just run on up to the top, kill the dregs, and then we'll worry about the, uh, the gargoyles that are here. And you can certainly kill the gargoyles earlier, but... I find it's just better to, to kind of wait because then they tend to even out. So now with that chain done, I actually like this cutscene. Both the chains are broken and the heart of Latria. We're gonna fall. Phew, down the heart goes. Anyway. Derpy-ass gargoyles. Are y'all gonna fight me, or just stay stuck on a bridge, or what's the deal here? The other one is not having a good time. <laughs> We're just gonna leave him. So anyway, head on over this way. Pick up this. 
And then we'll drop down, and there's that shiny from the start. So now, with all that done, uh, if you need to go back for whatever reason, obviously the arc stone is right on over there. Uh, but if you're good to continue, then we'll just run on over this way and make our way to the boss. Well, there's actually one more area of some good loot. Uh, so a couple of these guys are going to be found throughout the level now. Now that we dropped the heart, it shouldn't really be a problem. You've been following along with the guide and upgrading your weapon and all that. Uh, so what we're doing is we're getting down into that pit. There's some good goodies down in that pit. Two things of vital importance to us. One, which we can trade to Sparkly the Crow to get access to uh, another colorless demon soul. And the other, the Ring of Avarice, which is used to... Uh, drastically increase your soul gain so if you're still looking to farm some souls time is upon you all right over here some goodies let me pick it up These guys usually stay inside. You don't come out that far. Oh, well. Alright. Uh, oh. Damn. Out of the sky. Let's go this way. We'll pick up all these. Bunch of uh, mercury stone stuff. Oh, excuse me. Moonlight stone. Moonlight mercury. We're, we can find both of them here. But if you are using the Enchanted Falchion, the Moonlight Stone is, uh... Actually, no, the Falchion is Dark Moonlight, I believe. Anyway, you can use that stuff to make magic weapons. So head on in here now. And there's a couple enemies here, but it's it's nothing bad. Just kind of go around in a loop, pick up your stuff. Actually, you know what? I want some of the stuff I'm going to want on me. We'll send you to storage and you to storage. There's the gold mask. There's the ring of avarice. So the uh, I don't remember the exact total. I think it might be a twenty percent increase to your soul count. But regardless, any time that you're doing the reaper farm that we talked about, um, put on the ring of avarice. It is. I mean, it's a big increase. I remember, it's a big increase. You know what? Why not? Let's. Pop a Google it real fast. Twenty uh, percent, indeed, right on the marker, uh, and that's actually the same exact ring that you can buy from the lady that cost the fifty thousand souls. Uh, they just got it for free, so yeah, saving you money day by day. That side of it, dry fist. That's that's wrong. That is wrong and depraved. Anyway, with all that good stuff acquired, just uh, head on up, and we're up and out. We got um, basically one more enemy to kill, and then we are on to the boss. my kill, I mean snipe from the safety far away. Alright, so you'll notice the tendrils are now gone. Before we climb up the giant staircase, run back here and grab this little guy. Uh, now, about halfway up the staircase is going to be another Mind Flayer, so just get your bow ready. And you can, let's see, there he is. So, we're going to run until we're within a decent range of him, and then we're going to use these little chain pillars to block his magic and snipe him. That's probably a good distance. 
And keep in mind, we got the bow, and the bow is gonna hit stun him anyway. But just in case he gets a cast off, you can see it hits those pillars. Down he goes. Top. And then there's two more goodies we can grab. One will be back this way to the left. And one will be back the opposite direction. Right past the fog wall. Um, seems like a good time to discuss the boss. So the man-eaters are weak to fire. Um, it is a two boss fight. So the idea is you start fighting one man-eater. Think of them like gorilla gargoyles. Uh, they're very, very angry, uh, but they tend to have the same kind of buggy AI that the gargoyles have. So it's, it's important that you have a bow here. I mean, if you've been following along, you know, we've, we are very big fans of our bow. Uh, but every now and again, they'll get bugged up in the air. And you might just have to use your bow to, to finish them off. So, important to have some arrows. Um, there is a... You fight them on a bridge to start. I would not suggest fighting them on the bridge. I feel like that's a very bad idea. Um, we're actually gonna... I'm gonna pull out my little DBS. We'll try it out. Um, what do I get more defense out of? Oh, your, your gloves? You weigh nothing. Why do I have official's gloves still? Keep you on? I can't. Um, instead, I would suggest running past them, and there's kind of a center circular platform. I would, st I think you should fight them on that. That's just a little bit safer. Um, and this is actually, well, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, let's see, beyond that, you can, uh, they have an AoE thing, kind of like a sonic wave sound blast, and they have a charge. The charge can knock you off and gravity kill you, which is why you want to get uh, over to that center platform and basically just play it safe and hit them from behind. Um, beyond that, you can cut the snake tail off of them, and uh, that's about it. So, let's talk about Cursed Weapon and Dragon Bone Smasher, and why we wanted the Talisman of the Beasts. Now, the Talisman of the Beasts is unique in that even though we don't meet the magic or the faith requirements for it, we are still able to cast spells with it, and this is what is known as a Cracked Talisman of the Beasts. It's not going to uh, change anything, really, but especially with Cursed Weapon. Cursed Weapon typically drains 1% of your health per second. But with a Cracked Talisman of Beasts, it'll instead only drain one health per second. So that drains one HP per second. The shield heals for two HP per second. So basically, we get all the benefits of Cursed Weapon without any of the drawback of it. Uh, which is really, really cool. So anyway, put that on whatever weapon you're using. Pop that out. And let's go in and smash ourselves a Man-Eater. So I'm just going to run right past them here completely fine. And this is where we want to fight, right up here. Might take a second. Once he lands, we'll, we'll give him a good smash. It's a dragon bone smasher just chunks. It's not the most annoying part of the fight, it's just waiting for them to land. why I said bring a bow, because they might they might do this bullshit. Ideally, you want to kill the first one before the second one shows up. Right, that's one dead. Um, I need to do some grass. charge hits you. They're gonna have a bad time if you do. You 
can see how we're able to just kind of use this big uh, fire vizier to just kind of hang out. Oh, away he goes again. Dragon Bone Smasher. All right. Uh, so with them dead, there is two loots that we can get. One right over here. And be very careful getting these. It would be uh, very sad for you to die after coming all this way. Uh, so let's see. We got that moon sword, and there should be some grass up ahead. Uh, now, as for the boss soul, uh, there's no spells or anything you need that come from it, but you can use it to make a weapon. Honestly, the weapon's not good. Um, it's unique in the sense that it'll let you, um, which honestly, warp out of here real fast, too. You don't want to risk. This is a very, very uh, popular invasion hotspot, so warp out. Um, but the weapon is like a small dagger type thing that steals 20 souls per hit on a target. But in the grand scheme of things, 20 souls per hit really isn't a lot. Uh, and on top of that, the weapon's actually like really dookie. So I would recommend just gobbling this bitch down. It's worth almost 20,000 souls uh, on its own. And we're going to level up, obviously get rid of our humanity. And then in the next episode, we are going to knock out the boss here. And we are going to do the tendency events in this area. So stay tuned and I will catch you all soon enough with more.